John brought up in the comments the issue of people always wanting your money, um, family members. Um, it's called a debt of gratitude, and this is where they get the brass neck to ask you for money. Um, the person you're dating, married, whatever, they would have been funded through education, or sh should have been. Um, the person who funds them through education doesn't do it out of love. They do it out of pension plan. Um, because the debt of gratitude is, we helped you in your life, we now you now owe us a debt of gratitude. Now, the problem I have with that is there's no figure on it. Um, I know people whinge in the West about uh, student loans. <coughs> but the fact is, a student loan is a fixed figure. Um, fact is, I got through education without having a student loan. I, I don't understand why so many people struggle to pay them off. Um, especially if you actually picked a subject that actually made money. Um, but... The problem is the debt of gratitude in the Philippines has no figure. So you're actually getting somebody that is borderline made into a slave um, because every month they're expected to give up their money. But it's worse than that because when they get their first job, the relatives are already taking their money. Um, I remember a Yaya, which is a nanny, they work for us. Her parents had been robbing the girl blind. She didn't even have money for a deodorant, for God's sake. Um, and that was when she used to work for another friend of ours before she worked for us. And she, I think the reason we ended up with her working for us is to get her away from her own relatives. And then she stole from us because her relatives needed more money. Um, part and parcel of life in the Philippines. Um, but the point being, this debt of gratitude is a major problem. Um, because it's not done in a nice way. It is m manipulative. It's not done in a way that says you had a choice in this situation. It's done in a way that says you got where you are today because we helped you. Now you owe us. You know, it, it's a bad, bad way to work. <clears throat> it could work if everybody played the game. But they don't even let you get to your first job before trying to cash in on it. Um, so you're constantly being dragged back down. Crap mentality slips in there. Um, where people are holding you back. And I don't even know how this got into Philippine culture. Because it's not normal. I, um, I, I know many families function as a group. Um, but they do function as a group. Um, I know friends that are Indian and also Chinese. That their cars and houses, well, even the, the Greeks as well, their cars, houses, and pretty much any large assets are bought by the head of the family because everybody functions as a group. That isn't happening. What you have is you'll have an aunt or somebody else that deals with all the funding of the education because they've got all the cash because they funded the last um, batch of people who are now being paid by the ones that are now working. And it's a cycle. That aunt, doing well, she's um, a slave master. Um, <clears throat> and that's my own opinion. I, you know, I'm saying that. That is my opinion. I, I don't see anything right with it. Um, I can understand wanting to help your parents in later life or whatever. But when your parents are still a working age and they've decided to stop work because you've now just hit being old enough to work so they can take every penny you earn off you, that's not right. That's slavery. So, as an expat, you you'll get people turn around and say, "Well, you know, well, sorry." You'll get people assume they can just fleece you for this cash, and a lot of it is down to you because you have not set guidelines before you even started your relationship. I I had uh, problems with it in my own relationship with my wife originally, but we dealt with it head on because the the fact is. We weren't buying into this, and I made it very clear early on I wasn't buying into it, and created a bit of a problem. But hey ho, I'm not supporting 50 to 100 people out of my back pocket, um, and all I can say is is communication. Communicate with the person you're in a relationship with, not the entire um, family. 
because they're they're often people who will manipulate the person you're dating because they've known them since childhood. They're the person that looked after them when they were sick. But they're now seeing that you're the cash cow. You've just walked into town with money that they can manipulate out of your pocket indirectly. So the way I say is if anybody wants money from me, they can ask me direct. I don't want anybody asking my wife, she's my wife. That's it. No discussion. Because at the end of the day, that's not uh, for them to make that decision. It's for me to make that decision. Um, if my wife wanted to do it with her own money and that's up to her, that's fine. But let's be honest, they're after the bigger cash most of the time. Because the, the amounts don't get smaller. And this is where a lot of these relationships fail. Because what happens is the person goes to the West with their new partner. Their new partner is working full time, but most of that money is going home for no apparent reason. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not as if you're helping back in the Philippines. Most of this money is wasted. Um, you see people with new cars. You see people um, getting wasted uh, every day. Their beer money is funded by somebody working in the Middle East working in really crap areas and they're coming out they can't they can't even fund to come home themselves they have to stay there and while their families enjoying wasting their money I don't know why they do it I I wouldn't I don't agree to it and all I can say is don't buy into it when people turn around and say you've got to accept Philippine culture they've got to accept Western culture simple as that Otherwise, because it's all to do with the power of the dollar, as they say. Or, um, and at the moment, what, what they're going to say. If they want to pay it in pesos, they can earn it in pesos. But at the end of the day, the bigger money is your money. And I don't agree with this um, debt of gratitude. If people want to work and get help working together, I'll go with it. If people think that they can just call me up and I'll just send money, they've got no hope. It ain't going to happen. It, it hasn't happened. <clears throat> and I find expats that just put up with it crazy. And the foundations of all this started when they didn't have that conversation that says, I'm not doing this and neither are you. Because when you go to the West, I mean, we're quite lucky. I can afford for my wife to stay at home. But I know many people that need double incomes. They need their wife to be earning as well as them. So when they turn around and only have one income because the their partner turns around and sends everything home, there's a strain on the marriage because they're saying, well, that's my money. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. I pay the electric, the gas, the water bills, the mortgage and everything else, and you have your money? I don't think so. So this is why it's all about communication and conversation. Get it out on the table at day one. And then if she needs you to reinforce it with the family, <coughs> just do it. Just say, I ain't buying into this. <coughs> because if you don't, the chance of your marriage being a success is pretty slim. Because you may think it's okay today, um, but something may happen later on, um, including the fact that the money will increase. Uh, let me give you an example. Somebody died. Not related to me, it's just I know the guy, um, this American guy who lives near where we live. And he put his hand in his pocket because uh, they asked for, I think it was. It wasn't a lot of money, it was like a few hundred dollars. But he said, okay, where's the funeral home? And there's like a, what, 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 what do you mean? I said, well, where's the funeral home? What, what do you need that for? Because I'll go and take the money. And then when he went there, it was already paid for. It was actually insured. And he had the same thing happen when a child got sick. The child was already insured. But they're saying we need money for medication, we need this and this. And it's like, okay, well, where's the, where do I need to go? Where's the hospital? Where, what, what bill do I have to pay? And when he went there, 
there's no bill. It's all covered under the insurance. So 